Hello Lizzie here and today I'm going to talk about Severus. Severus is our Halloween themed trick or treat box but in actual fact it makes a terrific storage box for either your sewing things, your knitting, your crochet, your paper craft, kids toys, you name it. You know we love a storage box and um, with, with this one with Severus it's actually a hexagon shape because that's the theme for this month and you'll notice behind me we've got hexagons all over the place. Um, so although I actually designed it with Halloween or autumn in mind, in this particular video we're going to do it in shades of blue just to show how it can be different. So if I take all my bits and bobs out you'll be able to see what it looks like. So um, it has a, a lining inside, um, obviously, <laughs> so it's fully lined and each six sides has a pocket here so you can put your, your tools in there. Now I actually use Decaville light for mine so it really stands up. In this particular video I'm going to use my stabilizer that I like to use and my wadding uh, that I like to use as well. So there's different ways that you can make this. The reason why I've done it in segments is because we keep that lovely hexagon shape, we keep that sort of squareness if you can get that with a hexagon. Um, the, the lining is actually one piece, one round piece, um, but because it's uh, inside it, it matters not, it matters not. But it makes it a little easier make for you than segmenting the lining as well, there's absolutely no need. Um, and of course you could fill that with potpourri at Christmas time and, and fruits and nuts and all those sort of things. It's a really big size um, and I think if I remember rightly from point to point it's 11 inches. I'll just do a quick measure. Yeah, just under 11 inches. So it's a really good size make. So with Severus you need, there's certain bits that you need. Now some of it I've already prepped for you already but we'll go through everything. So in the actual pattern itself, which actually, well, I, while I remember, it's actually a download on my website, lizzycurtis.com. Just look for Severus. And there is an A to Z, actually, so you can search. So you obviously need one hexagon for your base, but also you need that for your lining. And you'll see that I've put wadding on the back of mine and I've got a, a stabiliser as well. So if I pull that back, you'll see I've got a stabiliser. Now you may want to cut your wadding back a quarter of an inch. It certainly helps with the less bulkiness in the seams, but that's up to you. You decide what's best for you. So that's one. So that pattern comes in there and each side has a pocket. So I've already prepared five, so I'll do the extra one in just a sec. And what I, what I like to do is I've stitched across the top and I'll go through this with you and then I've stay stitched the pocket to this piece here and you can see, I've just about see, I've cut away the wadding a quarter of an inch all the way around just to make it less bulky on the seams like I said. And like I say, each one has a lovely pocket and the blues are gorgeous aren't they? Um, yes, yeah, so there's five made. So um, the first thing you need to do is obviously prepare all your fabrics, all the dimensions and everything you need are in the pattern. And when we look at the pieces here, um, you might find that you've got directional fabric. I mean, here I've got a little bit of a direction going on here. Um, and look at this, this is a glue spot coming through. Now that's important that you see that because I sprayed my fabric and not the wadding and you must always spray your wadding. Fortunately, I have a pocket that I can put over the top. So that is my piece already cut. There's my pocket piece and all I'm going to do is fold over a quarter of an inch here, a quarter of an inch again and then I'm going to just top stitch that um, along there, along that top to make it really nice and neat. So I'll just do that now. So I'll just bring the machine in a bit closer. Um, so you could lengthen your stitch, you could do um, a, a sort of contrasting thread. Um, with the blues, you could bring in a navy blue, that sort of thing. Um, it look really nice with a, perhaps a darker thread, just as a contrast. But I, I tend to use a lot of the cream. So there's our pocket put on top, okay? But I'm going to stay stitch. And I all start from here and go all the way around. I don't bother up the top here. I just literally... Um, stitch all the way around and you could lengthen your stitch if you want to. Now if you notice with this one the wadding goes right up to the edges so we need to cut that away. Now obviously what you can do is cut your wadding a half an inch smaller on two sides to actually reduce the bulk 
um, I, I can never decide. It's usually the last minute. I think, do I want this in the seams? Do I not? Well, you know, there's no rules here. We just decide as we go along. And actually, when I realised when I had the stabiliser in there as well, I always use Visaline H250. Um, it's a medium weight stabiliser, so it gives a little bit of rigidity. Uh, I thought maybe that wadding is a bit too much on the seam, so I cut it away. But I'll leave it on the hexagon base. I'm, I'm, not, I'm quite happy with that. So just cut that away. Hardly any scraps, so I'm not going to worry. Um, and then I'm going to attach my pocket. So I'm going to pop it over the top like that, line up the sides, and then literally I'm just going to stay stitch. Um, you might want to find that you go from the bottom up. Um, your fabric shouldn't move a lot, but sometimes they do, obviously, they, and that's where a walking foot is super. Um, but I just kind of go for it. I mean, the only thing I would say is when you put these together, because each six sides has a pocket, ideally you're going to get those pocket tops lined up. And when I say ideally, we're not going to lose any sleep if we don't. So there's my pocket attached. Um, so what I was thinking was that you could just do three pockets. That way you haven't got the, the stress of lining those pockets up because obviously when we put them together, you will notice, and I don't know if one of these is out. I haven't really sort of studied it. I mean, that's really good. That's slightly out. I mean, less than an eighth of an inch. I mean, gosh, is it a sixteenth of an inch? That might be something that really, really annoys you, really gets to you, because it's not absolutely perfect. Well, that's what I'm saying is if, if that's the case, then why don't you leave out three of the pockets and go every other one, and then it takes the stress away. So we've got our six pockets now, great. So we've quarter inch seam allowance all the way through this. So right sides together, and you'll find that these, the corners of your pockets slightly overlap. So when we look at it on the overhead, in fact, let me flip it over. I don't know if that'd be of any help, but let me flip it over. And I want you to see that they, it, they go slightly off, and that's absolutely correct. Because as you stitch a quarter inch around here, you'll, you'll come to quarter of an inch into that, those corners there. Um, and that means that you've got your proper seam allowance. So when we flip this over, just make sure that your straight edges are together and just try and get that in, in the centre. You can, you can obviously measure and mark it as you wish. I'm going to start a quarter of an inch in here. Let me just get my pointer because um, that'd be easier. So I'm going to start a quarter of an inch here. I'm going to come along here, a quarter inch seam allowance, and I'm going to finish a quarter inch here. Okay, and then we're going to put the next one on in exactly the same way, and then we're going to join these seams up. Okay, so it's it's quite a methodical process, um, but you will get good results with that. So, quarter inch in, and of course, if you want to, you know, do measure it and mark it. If you if, if you get anxious about stitching and the quarter inch. Um, with something like this, it has to be fairly accurate. I mean, it's not as bad as, as quilting. Uh, I think we can get a little obsessed with quilting, but um, it needs to be fairly accurate. So I've stopped a quarter inch away, and that leaves me, if we have a look at the overhead, that leaves me, do you see, that quarter inch seam allowance now perfectly lined up. So if I get my other pocket and pop that over the top, I'm going to start stitching a quarter inch there, and that should with any luck, meet up with that point that we've just uh, stopped at. So I'm just going to line this up. And you want to have a look at it and make sure that you've got that right in the middle there. And pull that piece back, that side piece back that we just had before, just pull that back so it's out of the way. We don't want to stitch over it. So we'll just go along the edge of this one. And again, stop a quarter inch away from the end. And you're going to kind of have to judge that unless you measure it. And of course, there's lots of gadgets and gizmos out there where you can measure just that quarter inch, put a little dot in there. It's not always accurate because the dot is a little bit away from the, the, the acrylic of the, the ruler. Oh, it gets a bit complicated. So look, there's my two sides. And um, I think, if, let's have a look on the overhead again. <laughs> it's much easier to see. So you can see, look, if I pull that out, you've got an absolutely perfect quarter inch there. If I keep sort of moving it about, you'll be able to see. So then you're going to put these two sides together 
and, and create your first side. And do you see what I mean about lining these pockets up? Um, I, I mean, I could line them up perfectly here. Can you see how that works? Let's get it in the middle. I could line that up perfectly there, put a pin in. It may not match as we come down here. It's not bad, actually. It's not bad. So, so you could do that. Personally, mm, life's too short. So I'm just going to stitch straight from here. Now, well, all you've got to do is fold your hexagon in half. OK, fold your hexagon in half. And that immediately get, gives you that fabulous seam going along here. So if I just hold those two together like that, you'll see that where you stop stitching here, and you'll see this when you start doing that, that you could come off the edge here, but that could be your starting point, And then you're going to stitch all the way up here. I am not going to worry about my pockets, OK? So again, like I say, you fold your hexagon in half. It just gets it out of the way because it's a big piece of fabric um, and it could distract you. So I'm just lining up my sides. Okay, so that's our first piece done. <laughs> Can you see how that looks? So we just continue now. So again, you're folding back that seam. So don't forget, we, we left it a quarter of an inch away from the, the edge. So that, that's almost perfect, I'd say. So we fold that back. We get our next pocket. Don't forget to put the, the pocket side down at the bottom. You know what? I bet anything you like, the first time you make this, you'll do it upside down. It's just, just the way. It's just the way of things. Don't worry about it. You've got your arm picker. So just make sure your pocket is there. This is when you, if you use a contrast fabric, it's fab. Make sure you've kept that pull back. Put a pin in there if you want to. Nobody's going to tell on you for putting a pin in. Hold your piece in place. Pop it under the machine and just start at where you think that quarter of an inch is, that corner that we just did, that we just folded back. Um, and then come all the way along. Let's move those out of the way. They're creeping forward. All the way along. Don't forget, stop quarter of an inch away. And I'm kind of guessing this a little bit. But you measure it if you feel anxious about it. So again, we've got our two perfect sides. We're going to join them together. So join them together. Get that hexagon out of the way. Fold it in half and just uh, start stitching again. So you're just going to work your way all the way around those six sides. Um, if you get to a point where they're not quite meeting, I don't think this one's meeting very well. I'll show you. I'm not, not worried. <laughs> don't worry about it. <laughs> Line's too short. But look, it's about an eighth of an inch out at the top. It only means that somewhere along the bottom here, maybe, or maybe I didn't cut it right, because uh, we hand cut these things open for errors. So we're, we're building this almost inside out. OK, it's not going to end up this way around. It's going to be the other way around. But you can see how it works now. So I'm going to go ahead and do the other three panels and I'll come back to you shortly. Right, stitch that last panel in. Just got to join up. So this is the one we started with. This is the one I finished with. So again, it's just exactly the same, that nothing changes. You do the whole lot the same. So just bend your hexagon in half to get that out of the way. And just start from that quarter inch corner, if you like, where you stop stitching. Start from there and then go all the way up. So a quick mention about my gold club. If you haven't joined already, there's no time like the present. Just pop to my website, find the link that says gold members sign up here. And then you have access to my Facebook weekly events, which is absolutely amazing. My girls love it. And of course, you get the free patterns as well. So if you want more information, there is actually a video on YouTube that you can have a little look at. And there we go. So like I said, as you're going along, you could think about your pockets and getting them lined up. Or 
If you find that you've got a little bit of a difference in height with your pockets, either do three pockets so there's no stress, it doesn't matter. Or when you look at it, if they are out a little bit, pop a button on it solves all issues in life. In paper craft, they stick butterflies on things. In stitching, we put a button on something <laughs> and it's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. We can get so hung up about what we do, yeah? I know I do, and I'm, I'm pretty sure you do as well. Right, so we're just popping this out. I just want you to have a look at it as it stands at the moment. There we go. Now. I want you to know this one was made with Decaville, okay? Decaville Light. And it gives it a very good rigidity, okay? It's a really rigid side, so it's gonna really stand up like a really straight. With this, where we've used stabilizer and wadding, it's a little bit of a softer hexagon. There is a way around that because um, we want it to still look like a hexagon, right? So there's our base, you see? Um, just make sure all those corners are pushed out. I mean, this, to be honest, you can just finish off doing that. I was just going to have a look at my points. Not, not too bad, not too bad. So there is a way around this. Okay, I'm going to quickly show you a little tip or a trick. A couple of things you can do. The first one is to get your iron, get it nice and hot. You could even use a steaming cloth, like I did with the other video that for Sequoia. If you look at the bags behind me, you use a steaming cloth for those. So you can either gather your seam together. So you pinch the seam together where it joins and you could top stitch all the way down. Okay, that's one way. But you do lose some of the circumference, if you like. You'd have to adjust your lining. But with this one, all I'm going to do is, yes, I'm going to pinch those sides. I'm going to lay it flat on my desk. And, and this, like I say, this is where an, uh, a pressing cloth, an, uh, a nice damp pressing cloth is so good because you're going to just crease that. And, and that little action of just ironing it and creasing it will make quite a bit of difference to the shape. It stops the roundness going on. Plus we've cut some of that bulk out, haven't we, as well, from the seams of the wadding, and that'll make a difference as well. So let's just continue all the way around. We've got six to do. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm kind of rushing, but you perhaps, like I say, want to take your time and, and use a pressing cloth because it does make a difference. It's so super steamy. Um, and I actually prefer it to an actual steam iron because of the steam iron you can still get you know those kind of shiny marks I think I've come round to the beginning let's just do that one again it's still warm there we go so let's just switch that off now so there is my hexagon box it's looking a little better than it did five minutes ago because we've made it a little bit more hexagony <laughs> But now we need to do the lining. So the lining is the hexagon shape that you have in the pattern. And it literally is a, 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 just a strip of fabric. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's a strip of fabric that will go all the way around. Now, I always cut mine a lot bigger. I always cut mine at least four inches bigger. Yes, yeah, so I cut a long strip and I always cut it four inches longer because I have a little bit of a trick when it comes to putting one piece around a circle or a square or hexagon, whatever it is. So I actually, if, if we look on the overhead, it's probably better. So when I start stitching, so this is the strip that I started with, I start a quarter inch in, okay? I start a quarter inch in. Um, and that, that piece is my, like I said, my starting point. And you can see when you look at, when you look at it overhead, that, I don't know if you can see, but there are no stitch marks here. So I start here and then I just piece it all the way around. Now with, because we're putting a straight edge onto a shape, um, I've actually snipped into the straight piece of fabric just so it neatly goes around the corner. So that's, that's, that hopefully we can get a close up of that. So you can see I've just nicked that straight piece onto the shape. And I do that with a circle as well. I, could, I keep snipping into it just so it fits nicely. So then I, I attach this all the way around. Okay, I just keep on going, keep on snipping up the corners, just keep on going. And when I come back to 
just about where I've started. I, I stop, I'll trim back and then I will stitch straight up to that quarter inch and, and you can see where I've stopped. There's a little bit, bit of bunching of, of thread there. Hopefully you can see that. Um, so then I stop. So that's bringing the two edges together like that. That's where I started, that's where I finish. And I've snipped away this long piece because I always deliberately make it longer for you because our tensions and how we stretch things are different to each other. And then I stitch up here, up here, okay? Then I put the two edges together and stitch up there, okay? And I've, on this one, obviously, I've left a turning gap. So you do need to leave a turning gap of about three, three and a half inches, something like that, because we've got quite a bit of bulk to actually get through here. So that's how I put the lining together. And it's just a simple strip. I've actually pressed the creases in. You can see I've pressed the creases in. So it might look um, a little bit more hexagony. <laughs> just made that word up. So right sides together. So just pop them inside each other. And uh, uh, you could go by where you've pressed if you have pressed those faux edges, if you like, those faux folds. Um, but really all you want to do is just keep wriggling it around to make sure it fits nicely. And the turning gap, well, it could be at a seam. It doesn't, it, it doesn't matter too much, uh, but we need to get the points lined up. Let's have a look. So just make sure that the hexagons are sitting on top of each other. So your lining and your main bag box, the hexagons are absolutely square on each other. Bad choice of words. But that's that's really what you want to do. So just and I suppose that's another reason why I pressed these just to make sure that they were going to sit nicely. Um, so if I bring a few clips in. Um, you may find, depending on your how you stitch, that you may find that your lining is just a little bit too small or a little bit too big. Just ease all that in. It, it won't be that far out, but just bear that in mind because what we've done is we've pieced six pieces. Not every one of those six pieces is going to be absolutely 100% a quarter of an inch. I can guarantee it. Um, so, so cut yourself a little bit of slack here and, uh, and, ju and just ease it all in. You know, I think that's not too bad. We'll see. So it's just a case of stitching it all together. So I'll start anywhere. If you've got a sewing machine that has a free arm, this is perfect because then it goes under the free arm. Now I'm going to stitch about a quarter of an inch. It's not going to take an awful lot of pressure. You know, it's not like a bag. And I'm going to see how I get on with the looseness of the fabric because it really does, it can, it can be a little disappointing when you've stitched something and then the lining and the actual box itself, bag, whatever it is you're making, doesn't quite fit. But because we haven't seamed the lining, we haven't got a lot of leeway with that. So it's a case of fitting it in. If you've got the odd crease here and there, oh gosh, don't worry about it. It's just a trick or treat box, or it could be a box that's going to be on your Christmas table. Now I'm just going to do something naughty here. This is what I do if I need to increase. What it is, the panels are totally static, okay, because we've stabilised them. They're not going to stretch, they're not going to move, they're not going to do anything. But the top fabric, the lining of fabric will, because it's, it's not stabilised. So you'll find that it might loosen up a little bit as you stitch. Now, in order for me, now this is not always what I would say to you to do, but for me to get that right, A, you should use a walking foot. I preach it, hardly ever do it. But I've got a technique of just keeping this back fabric taut, keeping the front fabric taut, and then it should go together a little better. But if you're not careful, you could break a needle. I don't uh, advocate this, but it's good for you to see it. Because what I'm doing, I'm slightly stretching my box, even though it's kind of really static. I'm still slightly stretching it. 
um, and it goes together quite well. But use your walking foot. <laughs> oh dear. Right, that's pretty much perfect. Not bad. I'm happy with it. Now, ideally, you're going to top stitch this afterwards as well. So don't put the sewing machine away just yet. So let's find our turning gap. Now, if you've used Decaville Light, which is super duper, I love it. This bit you'll find to be very time consuming <laughs> because it's stiff stuff. With the wadding and the stabiliser, it's not so bad. So just keep pushing it through, pushing it through. And you always think when you do this, oh, you've pressed all those pieces. You've taken all that time to give it a really good press. But those creases, it's a bit like muscle memory. They'll always remember that they're there. You just have to remind them. So you just need to get the iron on it again. And because we're dealing with a, a kind of, well, the hexagon shape, I keep saying square, but you know what I mean, straight edges and things like that, it's easy to press out. So there's my turning gap and I'm just going to pop that under the machine and what I do is I just bring those two seams, excuse me, two seams together and just um, give them a little tug. So get one end, if I can get hold of the other end, I will in a second, <laughs> just give them a little tug. And if, I don't know if you noticed when I was showing you about how to stitch this together, I had already ironed those seams open. And because of that, those seams know exactly where to go back. Like I said, it's, it's kind of like muscle memory. Ironing memory, I don't know what you call it. And uh, I, I'm, I'm not doing the most brilliant of jobs here, but you'll get my drift. Uh, let's just get rid of these threads. I can't abide sticky out threads. It's not too bad. Right. So now I tell you what you need to do. Open this up, flatten these out, get those hexagon bottoms out of the way and give that a really, really super duper press. Open up those seams. This is my lining here. This is my box here. Give that a really good press. And for the time being, I'll finger press it. Because the heat of my hands will do a fairly decent job. Um, because the next stage would be to top stitch and you really don't want any of that fabric to have rolled over uh, and ideally you would push the lining more to the back than allow that lining to show um, and then you're good to go I hope I can get hold of it there we go so push that in obviously your hexagons will sit beautifully together. So do you see how I mean? I want you to have a look at this, it's important. Do you see how that lining wants to roll over? That's because of all the seams. Sorry, so you just need to push those seams back. Give that an iron, give it a press. Press, press, press. Certainly as a dressmaker, that was the thing that I always learnt. You must press every stage. So, Let's just top stitch it. I'm going to roll that back as I go, but I want you to iron yours. Really, I do. I know, I'm such an ag. So, mm, about an eighth of an inch, I suppose. One tiny little back stitch. Sorry the licky fingers, but you know what? They do work. It's not um, the done thing in this day and age, is it, to do that? But considering this is going to be for me, I'm not going to gift it to anybody. Um, well, not that I'm aware of. Somebody might ask for it. Uh, obviously, if it's a gift, use some silicone fingers. I have some somewhere. Silicone fingers are brilliant. So I'm just rolling that lining back. I'm t kind of telling it who's boss. Um, just pulling it back as well. And like I say, if you wanted to, you could put that seam in, bring those seams together and then top stitch them together on every six panels and then that will give you more shape especially with uh, we're, because we're using a softer product but it gives a different look right nearly done somebody asked me today about top stitching and trying to keep it straight uh, I suppose it comes with experience but you could, if you've got the time, 
and you want to get it absolutely perfect iron as i said and then draw yourself a line do it with a heat erasable pen nobody will ever know and you'll have the perfect top stitching and also make your stitches a lot lot bigger take them up to about three so just running over the where i just started and that gives me the most beautiful shape and of course your lining always wants to be that little bit more bulky but give it a steam give it a steam it's amazing how, how a steam really helps these things plus um, you could make your hexagon a wee bit smaller just an eighth of an inch all the way around would make quite a difference to how it sits inside your box but there we are I just keep pushing that around needs a good press but there we are can you see you can see how that lining I haven't pushed that right in see how that lining wants to misbehave but at the end of the day you're going to fill it with goodies there you go that looks a little bit better now so there we are so there is our hexagon box that's our severus and like i say just get those creases back in and we tip it up again it looks a little bit more like a hexagon the base looks like a hexagon lovely fabric isn't it so there we are so that is our blue version against the sort of halloweeny colors of the first one i did for the pattern because obviously as you can see behind me my theme for this particular month is all about autumn and halloween and again those gorgeous colors i love these colors bright and cheerful into our homes but then again this could be for the christmas table or maybe for easter put an easter eggs in well it could be just for your sewing things you know if you've got any sprays they can go in there no bother it's a it's a big old thing so there we are i hope you enjoyed it so that's severus don't forget it's a download on my website lizzycurtis.com um obviously you've got this video tutorial and you've got full picture and written instruction as well so i hope you enjoy it and i hope you make loads